So boys and girls, many of you have, may have seen this piece of art before. And if you have, but you don't know the name of it, it has something to do with these round things up in the sky, squirreling and whirling. They are stars. And this painting is called Starry Night. It is a very, very famous painting by a man named Vincent Van Gogh. Now, recently, I went to a show called The Van Gogh Experience. And what's really cool about it is that they have taken Vincent Van Gogh's paintings, and it's like they bring them to life. They have projections of them all through the room, and it's like the painting is coming to life right before your eyes. And it keeps changing and changing and changing. And while you're in it, I mean, I could have sat there all day because it just feels like you are inside the painting. Now, one of the reasons that the people who designed this show would have used Vincent van Gogh's paintings is because he uses what's called movement in his paintings. Now, do not be fooled. There is nothing moving in this painting really right now. It is very still. However, do you see that by the way he painted with these little dotted lines going over here and over here around the moon, there's a feeling that if I pressed play on this painting, you could probably anticipate how it might start to swirl and move. Part of that's because of the thick way that he applied the paint onto the canvas. It's also the way that he used these little short little lines, in this case kind of wavy. And even in his own self-portrait of himself, do you see that he has this kind of waviness going in the background? He never missed an opportunity to use lots of paint to show movement. And some people have even made a study of all of the different types of dotted lines that he used. Some curves, some fat, some skinny, some short, some long, some kind of faded and rough. Some of them thick and rough, some of them thick and broken. Really, really interesting stuff. But the other thing I want you to notice is that right here in the front, there are many kids who say to be Miss Heaterks. What in the world is that? Is it smoke? Is it a weird castle? Is it a fire? Is it uh, some dead tree? Is it what the world is that thing? Well, I'm going to tell you right now. It is actually a cypress tree. This was a type of tree that grew where Vincent van Gogh was. It grows very tall and very thin. And if you crushed a little bit of the, its branches, it would smell like a Christmas tree. What? I know. Now, sometimes people would shave the edge of it with a trimmer so that it would look nice and perfectly like the tallest cone in America, but, or in Europe, but the ones that Vincent van Gogh would see were kind of in just nature, in the wild. So they would be a little bit bushier. So they might look more like this. And we're going to see that he just loved using a cypress tree in his paintings. Do you see the cypress tree here? Can you spot it? Now, in this case, the cypress tree is in what we call the middle ground. In the foreground, in the front, we have like this wheat field, or you could maybe think of it as wildflowers. In the background, we have a little bit of movement in our sky, but not tons and tons. In this one, he has a cypress tree, kind of in what we call the middle ground. In the foreground, we have a little path right here. We have more wheat fields. On this one, he even gives us bushes and little hills and things like that. And in the background, look at this cumulus cloud day. It's not night, but look at the churning going on with those clouds. Awesome. On this one, this, this, uh, this one down here, oh, I love it. Here he's got a cypress tree right smack dab in the middle. He has this little path going here. And I love it that this one is at night with the moon and the star. And then, of course, you know this one here, Starry Night. At night, 
with a moon, with a star. And you can see right here that I have kind of mapped out on my paper the movement that I want to have in my sky and my cypress tree. Here I have my cypress tree. I got my plan for my moon and my stars. And today you are going to have the opportunity to do one like Vincent Van Gogh's or to make up your own arrangement. You can have it going portrait or you can have it going landscape. You can have it during the day or during the night. You can have the cypress tree in the middle ground or in the foreground. And you can have whatever you want down here, be it a wheat field or a city, farmland or whatever. So boys and girls, we're gonna stop here and now I'm gonna show you Miss Annabelle at work. So boys and girls, we now have the pleasure of watching Miss Annabelle starting her own Vincent van Gogh painting using a cypress tree. Now what she decided to do is put her horizon line on there and now she's doing a very gentle planning of her cypress trees. Now you might think those look like, like city buildings, but that's just what artists do when they're planning out the composition. They're planning out where they're gonna put everything. Now what she's doing is planting some little bushes. Now when I did my planning, I figured out where I wanted my cypress tree and I didn't draw mine like a building, I drew mine kind of like a cone. So whatever makes you happy. And you'll notice I also planned what we're gonna call our movement lines. If you look here, you'll see Miss Annabelle adding swirls in there. And that is gonna be her plan for the movement that she is going to be adding to her painting later on. She's even adding the movement down here for um, her path and for her bushes and for her wheat field. And that's gonna look great. Now what she's doing is she's filling in her sections. She's doing it fairly quickly and just with one color. If you look at this, you'll see that these are kind of the steps that they think that Vincent van Gogh used to make his painting. And you'll see that before there were ever any of those little movement details put on there, he first blocked out his color. Now, Miss Annabelle is using some different colors of green in just a minute as she blocks in her plan for her painting. So she's got her wheat field, now she's using some different colors of green for the ground and for her bushes. She's even planting that cypress tree. And once again, notice she's not coloring it in like a building. She's coloring it in like a cypress tree. Now she's planning her sky and she's even helping herself remember the big swirls that she wanted to put up there in the sky. Now that she's got all the color planned, it's time to start adding the movement details. And these are gonna be short little marks in the direction that you want your movement to go. And notice that she's not using the same color blue. She's using a different color blue so that it will show up. Here for her cypress tree, she's choosing a little bit of a darker green again so that her movement lines stand out. Here we can see that she's working on her wheat field and notice that she used a little bit more of an orangey yellow. And here we go. She's starting in her sky. Now she may even want to start to dip into the white and that will really make her movement lines start to pop. Do you notice how she's even putting movement lines on top of movement lines there? She's used quite a few different colors and now she's even using a lighter yellow for that wheat field. Really, really cool. So boys and girls, you're just gonna keep adding layers of movement lines. And then like we said, at the very end, it'll be even great to take, go into the white and let that kind of allow some of your um, details to pop. We're gonna be walking around and helping you. Probably the thing that might take a little while at the beginning is for you to figure out your plan. And remember, you're gonna be doing that in pencil. You can have one cypress tree, you can have five cypress trees. 
You can have it during the day or you can have it during the night. We can't wait to see what you're going to do.